This how-to video explains how we do enthalpy change experiments specifically related to the E equals MC delta T equation. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at how to use this equation and information we either obtain in an evaluative or in a practical uh, to usually determine the energy of a specific fuel. So let's quickly look at the equation and what the uh, the letters mean. So E equals MC delta T. E refers to energy change in the chemical reaction which takes place and it's normally measured in joules or kilojoules. M stands for mass and it's the mass of the substance that changes temperature. And they need to be very careful here because often students get confused between the mass of the fuel used and the mass of the uh, substance which is actually changing temperature by, by the burning or the combustion of the fuel. C stands for specific heat capacity, again, of the substance changing temperature. And most experiments that you encounter, encounter at A-level um, usually use water as the substance which changes temperature. And C, the specific heat capacity, is always given in the question. And if it's water, it's 4.12 joules per gram per degree C. You will not have to remember this because um, it will be given in the rubric. Delta T is the temperature change which occurs in the experiment and that can be measured in degrees C or Kelvin. So moving on let's look at a typical experiment setup and here it is. So we have usually a metal can which is called a calorimeter. We put a known amount of water into the can and in this case I've given an example of 100 centimeters cubed. We put a thermometer into the water and it's very important that we keep the end of the thermometer off the base of the, the can because what we're going to do is we're going to burn alcohol or fuel in the spirit burner and this is going to heat up the can and it's going to heat up the water. But if we put the thermometer onto the base of the can here, what we're actually doing is we're measuring the temperature of the can or the base of the can and not the temperature of the water. So we need to be very careful with this to make sure that the thermometer is actually in the water and not touching the can. And in most of the experiments that we do, we ignore the heat energy given to the can. But that is a factor, and it is a factor which actually um, makes the experiment inaccurate. And you may want to remember that for um, areas where the experiment is inaccurate when you come to a, any formal write-up. So underneath this, we have a spirit burner. Um, with a fuel in, and in this case I've just called it alcohol, but it could be any form of, uh, of fuel. And the important things in doing this experiment is that we measure the starting temperature of the water, uh, we measure the mass of the burner and the alcohol to start with, and we know the volume of water. So all that being said, uh, we've, we've set the apparatus up as shown, we set fire to the, the wick of the spirit burner we, uh, and this will warm the water up and we let the experiment go for a predetermined time or for a predetermined rise in temperature of the water and once we've done that what we end up with is something which looks like this so the water temperature has gone up in this case I've imagined I've stopped the experiment when the water temperature has reached 73 degrees. The volume of water hasn't changed because it's not gone past its boiling point so it hasn't evaporated. And I now re-measure the, the uh, mass of the spirit burner and alcohol and this time it's 210 grams. Um, you'll also see some spirit burners with a cap on. And those, that's important because uh, most of the fuels are fairly volatile which means that when you first measure the mass um, the fuel uh, will evaporate from the wick 
So uh, from the time you measure the mass to the time you set fire to it, if you don't cover this over, you're going to get a measure of evaporation from of fuel from the wick, which obviously is going to lower the mass and mean it make it look like you use more fuel than you actually have in the experiment. So here we've got our experiment completed. We've done it. We've run the experiment. What's the next stage? Well, this is what we know so far. The we know the mass of alcohol used. We started with 250 grams. We've now got 210 grams. So we've actually used 40 grams of fuel. And on the bottle we find that the relative molecular mass of the, the alcohol is 46. We're going to need these numbers after. The change in water temperature, we began at 23. We've ended at 73. And so the temperature change is 50 degrees centigrade. The mass of water, as I've already said, well, we had 100 centimetres cubed of water, and 100 centimetres cubed measures 100 grams, because one centimetre of cubed of water has a mass of one gram. Therefore, if we've got 100 centimetres cubed, we've got 100 grams. So here's a summary of the information we know. So now we proceed to the calculations. We do this in several stages. Stage one is to calculate the energy given by the alcohol. And this is where we use our E equals MC delta T. So we know the mass of the fuel, the thing change in temperature, is 100 grams. Note it's not the mass of the fuel used. The specific heat capacity is 4.12 because that's the specific heat capacity of water. And again, as I've already said, this number would be given to you in the rubric or information that comes with the question. And this is delta T, the change in temperature is 50. So if we run through this calculation, 100 times 4.12 times 50 equals 20,600 joules. So that's the amount of energy which has been given to the water by the alcohol. And it's very important to note that the, this energy is given to the alcohol, given to the water by 40 grams, which takes us into stage two of the calculations, which is to work it, now to work out the number of moles of alcohol used. And we do that, if we can remember, by using our general form, moles formula, which is N number of moles equals mass over the relative molecular mass or molar mass, which in this case is, well, the mass we've used is 40. Here's the 40, and this is where I said this number was going to be important. It's not the water, the 100, it's the now the mass of the fuel or the alcohol used, which is 40, over the molar mass or relative molecular mass, which is 46. So 40 divided by 46 equals 0 0.87 moles. So we've used 0.87 moles of alcohol to produce this amount of joules of energy, which takes us into the third and final stage, which is to calculate the energy per mole of the fuel or the alcohol. So the energy per mole is simply the amount of energy which has been produced or absorbed by the water in this case 20,600, divided by the number of moles used, and in this case that's 0.87. So 20,600 divided by 0.87 equals 23,678 joules per mole, which then we usually convert into kilojoules per mole by dividing this number by a thousand to give us a final answer of 23.678 kilojoules per mole. So this alcohol, in summary, produces 23.68 kilojoules per mole when it is combusted. And those are essentially all the stages of an experiment uh, on moles and combustion linked to burning fuels. And the equation that we started well with E equals MC delta T. Hope that helps. Thanks.